Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Breaking news this morning, the Cowboys have franchise tagged Tony Pollard. This was a pretty expected move, but it has been made official by the organization just before NFL free agency begins and just before the tag deadline opens up. Now, we'll break this down in depth, but Cowboys free agency is here, by the way. We'll be live on Monday. Keep that in mind, too. If you want free videos on everything, or live today, I should say it is Monday. If you want free videos on all the things the Cowboys do or maybe don't end up doing, hit that subscribe button right now, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. All right, more on the Tony Pollard franchise tag. This was a very expected move. Uh, all things considered. It was very a known outcome that this was the likely path it was going to be down. The Jones boys had spoken publicly about how, ah, you know, we're going to use the tag. Pollard's most likely. I think they were hoping to get a long-term deal done. That didn't get that close uh, as far as I can tell. The deadline for the franchise tag for Pollard was going to be on Tuesday, uh, 3 p.m. Central Time. That is not going to matter. They get it done in advance there. $10.09 million is the franchise tag cost for Tony Pollard this year. Now, they have some time. We'll break it down more in depth to get a potential long-term deal done. Pollard is coming off of the leg injury that he suffered in the postseason. Uh, Steven has said he's going to be back in time for camp, and I believe that. It was a tightrope ankle surgery, and the fractured leg is going to heal on its own. That's not a nine-month recovery. Uh, I think he'll be just fine. I'm really... Not that worried about the Tony Pollard injury. I would have been more concerned had it been a uh, an ACL, given what happened with Gallup this past year there. Coming off a 1,000-yard season, every year the Cowboys had said, ah, oh, we, we, we can't give Pollard more work. Ah, oh, we can't give Pollard more work. He, he can't hold up. He can't hold up. Every year he's given been given more work, both in the running game and the receiving game too, by the way. We only saw the rushing stats here. Every year he's, been, he's gotten more work, and... He's averaged well over five yards a carry the past two years, something the other backs on this team have been unable to do. Pollard, by far, is your most explosive player on offense, and frankly, he's the only fast player you utilize on offense. I love CeeDee Lamb. He's a playmaker. He's not a burner, though. Pollard does bring you the juice and speed this offense really lacks without him. So what is your one-word reaction to tagging Tony Pollard? That's the pinned comments on today's video. So if an ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Let me know your one-word reaction to Tony Pollard. All right, well, my one-word reaction here is classic. Uh, this is a expected outcome. I used expected earlier, so I don't want to make it my one word that's kind of cheating there. Classic Cowboys, they love using the franchise tag. They do it a bunch, and problem is, well – if you view it as such, they don't get deals done very often on that first. I have the list somewhere, but it's like Dak didn't get it done. Tank Lawrence. I think the last guy they tagged and got the deal done before the deadline, I think was actually Des Bryant. That's how far back it got, despite multiple tags being used. Tank, Dak, uh, Schultz, all these guys get tagged. Anthony Spencer, and there's no uh, long-term deal done in the end. So with Pollard getting tagged, and I, I would be shocked if they got a deal done before free agency. Well, it doesn't matter because they're easy tagged. That means Leighton Van Der Esch, Donovan Wilson, Dalton Schultz, and others, as expected, are going to hit free agency. You know, we'll see about Leighton Van Der Esch, see about Donovan Wilson. Once he gets a free agency, bidding wars happen, winning the deal isn't the way things typically go once you reach that state. I think Schultz, by the way, bye. He's gone. I don't think he's coming back at all for the Cowboys. So more changes coming, as it always does, for this Cowboys team. We'll go more in depth here on Pollard and what it means for Ezekiel Elliott. But today's Cowboys report is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel prepared to take on my day. Once I got baby Olivia set up with her breakfast, I make my own AG1. I don't feel the need for caffeine in the morning anymore, and I feel energized throughout the day. Plus, AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health. 
Covering my nutritional bases for the day literally couldn't be any easier. That's why I trust Athletic Greens. I mix one small scoop of AG1 with water, drink it first thing each morning, and I'm done just like that. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day. It's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients, making it a win-win. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's perfect if, say, you went to Indianapolis for the combine like I did, set it up so well. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out, folks. Links in the comment section and the description of today's video. With Pollard being franchise tagged, it's time for a new depth chart update. We took off the asterisks for free agents. That, that all, that's all we did on that front there. Uh, there will be new blood in this running back room. Uh, I would be pretty surprised if they didn't draft somebody uh, at some point. I, I don't know if they're going to bring back Rico Dowdle. It might be a they release. He's an RFA. It's a little bit expensive for a guy who hasn't done anything in his NFL career. They could not tender him and then choose to bring him back on a cheaper deal with you know no guaranteed money. Malik Davis will fight for a roster spot. Pollard is going to be a member of the Dallas Cowboys this upcoming year. For those of you wondering, by the way, about, oh, well, could, could you have two franchise tags? Or could the team make an offer? And it's going to be the non exclusive tag. Could the team trade two first round picks for him? No. No team is going to do that. That's just not going to be an, an, an option for other NFL organizations. So Pollard will be in Dallas at least for this year. Beyond that, you know, we got to wait and see. I would not be surprised if the Cowboys drafted a running back, and if they take one early, they could end up Schultzing uh, Tony Pollard, where he's here for a year, and then they let him leave in free agency and play with their, their new toy on offense. So prediction time. This offseason, before that deadline will break down in a minute, will Dallas get a long-term deal done with Tony Pollard? Why for yes and for no? Go vote in the comment section. Now, here are the key franchise tag dates, by the way. February 21st, the window opens. No one uses the meaningless trying to trade somebody. Uh, the window will close tomorrow. Cowboys taking care of it 29-ish hours in advance. Timing there isn't really all that impactful. The new deadline that matters for Tony Pollard is July 15th. The extension deadline for any players who have been franchise tagged. If they do not reach a new long-term deal... By that time frame, Pollard must play on that 10 point, we'll round up and say 10.1 for math purposes, franchise tag cost. As of right now, that places him, I guess, tied for ninth. We didn't include any of the franchise tag deals yet on this front. Uh, ironically enough, this is all based on like the last calendar year because like Barkley's a free agent too. Uh, Barkley was on his rookie deal. Again, that number two overall pick, and you've been made top nine highest paid running back, which seems significant there. What's noteworthy here and why not everyone wants to pay a running back is McCaffrey will probably back in San Francisco on a new deal, but Kamara, Elliott, Cook, Derrick Henry's on the trade block now. The uh, Packers restructured Aaron Jones' deal. Joe Mixon, James Conner. This top 10 list is going to look a lot different after free agency because half of them might be gone or on new teams at minimum. And frankly, of this list, with Barkley being a rookie, McCaffrey already got traded. Kamara, Elliott, Henry, and Cook could all be on new teams. You got to be worried about paying a big time back that amount of money. Now, if you can get a three-year, $30 million deal, there's a big gap there between the $12 million dudes and James Conner, who got $7 million in free agency. Many of you might be wondering, what does this mean for Ezekiel Elliott? More of the same. We're going to break down Jerry's comments on Ezekiel Elliott on today's live show. Make sure you are subscribed. He's not going to be back at his current deal. He has to take a major pay cut to stick around. I'm unconvinced that happens. We'll go more in depth on that later today. So make sure you tune in for our live show.